bars. Remember, that gets the ball rolling. Here's what to watch for. At H0, the DDO will usually call out something like Allumage Volcan. That's the ignition of the main stage. But we don't lift off yet. There will be a seven-second wait while the onboard computer is checking the performance of the main engine. It does this twice. If all is well, it gives the order to light the two boosters, and we're off. And we will cut away and let you watch. Final countdown. We'll be back once Ariane has cleared the tower. Enjoy the liftoff, everybody. À tous de DDO, attention pour les décomptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage EAP, décollage. We are underway. Did you watch the arms pull back as schedule? And did you count to seven? After those seven seconds, a slight wait, and then boom, away we go. You saw Ariane 5 begin her mission, rising off the ground here in French Guiana, leaving a trail of gold. And right on time, 1834 local with her two passengers, Arabsat 6B, also known as Bader 7, and GSAT 15. The boosters are providing 92% of the thrust right now, propelling the launcher along its trajectory at an ever higher velocity, getting her away from the pull of the Earth. And there is a lot to pull. Ariane's weight at liftoff, 775 tons. And most of that is fuel. She's burning two tons of fuel per second. She's now following the flight program in the onboard computer, which gives all the commands, including the separations. We'll soon begin to see those. We are in the first of four flight phases. The first three are powered. The last is not. We'll describe each in turn. Right now, the first flight phase, the Vulcan engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will burn their propellant in just under two and a half minutes. They're the first that will be jettisoned. You'll hear the DDO call out that milestone as he calls out right now. Everything is okay on board. We're heading east out over the Atlantic. The decision to build the site here in French Guiana made in the 60s when France wanted a new base was part, in part made for its opening on the water to allow for launches over uninhabited areas. On the bottom of your screen, our altitude on the left and our speed on the right, we need a speed at orbital injection about uh, nine kilometers per second. Our altitude will be a, about a thousand kilometers up for our first passenger, so watch for those numbers. You just saw the flame out of the boosters. You can see them falling away. The white dot below them is the main engine, which continues to burn. You can see what it looks like up there. The boosters are jettisoned. There's a second one out of camera range on the left. What happens is the onboard computer detects there's no more fuel in the tanks. As they have no more propellant to burn, thrust decreases, and the computer senses the drop in acceleration, decides to separate them. A nice shot of the main stage burning and the two boosters falling away. Three points of light as the DDO calls out, all is OK on board. We say 67 uh, kilometers altitude, for instance, that's the uh, the uh, altitude where the boosters were jettisoned. Sometimes it might not be the, the figure you see on the screen. This is quite normal to do to a slight delay in the telemetry coming in here. Coming up on separation of the fairing, due in uh, just about a second or two. And you'll see that on the animation. You may be able to see it. on the camera that we have here. There it is. You see the other two points of light falling away. Wonderful shots. The sky is just so clear tonight. On the onboard camera, you see what happens there. There's another half out of camera range on the right. Separation is given by two pyrotechnical systems. One is horizontal, one's vertical. They're cords that actually remove the fairing by a small controlled explosion. With the fairing gone, you have uh, exposed to the elements, Arabsat 6B. 
Underneath that, a black bell-shaped structure, which is called the Silda. That's a carrying structure, which houses our second passenger. Underneath that is GSAT-15. We can separate the fairing now because we're out of the dense layer of the atmosphere. Over 100 kilometers up, there's neither friction nor heating which could disturb the passengers, so we discard also any dead weight. The fairing weighs over two tons. And it's lined, by the way, with acoustic panels that protect the satellite from the noise of the engines at liftoff. Our speed is what's important right now, which is the role of the main stage. Cryogenic propellant, not only highly efficient, but provides a push that can last for a long time. There are different propulsion systems on Ariane 5. Cryogenics, as used in the main stage, are more efficient than solid propellant, which is used in the boosters. Basically, solids are for getting us off the ground, away from the pull of the Earth, while cryogenics are for more precision orienting of the vehicle. And, of course, they allow a stage to be reignited in another version of Ariane. On the right is... Arabsat 6B, below that is the SILDA. Below that, the white bands were the vehicle equipment bay in the upper stage. And below that is the first stage. Ariane 5, the heavy lift launcher, two other members of the family Soyuz lifting middle sized payloads, two and three tons. And Vega, a one ton light launcher. We're going to go to our first replay of uh, shots of liftoff that happened just five minutes ago. Always exciting to relive those moments of uh, liftoff. We have cameras at several of the half dozen observation sites that are stationed across the base here, and they furnish us with shots from different angles. We should be getting their footage in just a moment. Some figures. This is the 83rd mission for the Ariane 5. The two passengers, the two passengers are the 168th and 169th satellites to be launched by Ariane 5 as the DDO continues to say all is working flawlessly on board. They are also the 401st and 402nd satellites to be launched on a version of the Ariane launcher. Remember the program began with an Ariane 1 in 1979, it flew until 1986. Ariane 2, the first upgrade, was in service from 1986 to 89. Ariane 3, even more powerful, worked from 1984 to 89. And Ariane 4, the real workhorse, flew from 1988 to 2003 before being retired. Ariane's radar and telemetry signal in about 30 seconds is going to be picked up by our first downrange tracking station. That's at Natal, over the border in Brazil. Natal will see the lower stage burnout and separation of the lower stage as well as, as, well as the upper stage ignition. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground. The launcher is sending radar and telemetry back and a network of stations keeping constant watch on the health of her systems. Telemetry being the launch vehicle data information on 1,500 parameters being collected and transmitted back to these ground stations. Every second, 